You're listening to Sister Stargazers, celestial and terrestrial observations and advice from two real-life sisters. Welcome, fellow stargazers. Your sisters are in the house. Hi, Jude. Hi, Sarah. So good to be here. Happy October. Yeah. Wow. We're on the fir- <laughs> we're in the first week of October. Yes. Episode 56. We're going to look uh, specifically at Sunday, October 2nd through Saturday, October 8th. Let's get started. Where do you want to start with? Well, the big news is Mercury retrograde ends on Yay! Sunday, October 2nd. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he will... He or she, Mercury's androgynous, so so he or she will move out of their echo phase as the month progresses. But this is a big turnaround for Mercury and for any negotiations, business discussions, contracts that need signing, any of that is all good now. Can I just ask, yeah. you said echo phase? Is that something that happens when a planet returns to forward motion? When the planet starts to go retrograde, it starts at a certain point, a certain degree. Okay. And it backs up to a certain degree. But when it starts moving forward, it doesn't get out of its the phase of when it goes past when it started. Ah. And maybe, and I don't know if that's clear. Okay, gotcha. Well, hypothetically, like if it starts at 15 degrees in one sign and backs up into another sign, it has to come back through that 15 right. degrees from where it started. Yes. So that's the echo. The echo is it coming back through as it moves forward? Yeah. Okay, cool. It's called a shadow or echo phase. Neat. And what it does is it's just, it's just kind of Mercury kind of pulling through that degree sector of the zodiac and kind of any unfinished business, things that weren't looked at or were kind of, there's a, there's a kind of a second chance to kind of Got clean it. things up or sweep things up or um, tidy things up or move things along or return phone calls or upgrade your, <laughs> whatever it is you need to do, you know, that you've okay. been postponing or that have been postponed or unbeknownst to you were not need to be repaired or whatever, that kind of thing. Thanks. I didn't mean to get no, us off track. No, I think that makes a great sense. question. I don't think I've covered it before. All right. So it's coming out of retrograde and it will be traveling through this echo phase. Yes, but it's, okay. it is in direct motion. Yes. Okay. So that's awesome. That's an Yay. awesome thing. And it should help folks to feel more confident about communicating and, nice. and not having to go back on renegotiate or whatever. Yeah. The moon will be in Capricorn, and it will form... This is still on Sunday the 2nd. It makes a conjunction to Pholus in Capricorn, which Mm. we've talked about a little bit. At the time it makes a conjunction to Pholus, it's going to make a square to Jupiter in Aries and a square to Venus in Libra, who are still both in this wide opposition, Mm. which we talked about last week. Right. It will also square the sun. Mm. So this is a what's called a T square. Yeah. And this has to do with, you know, because it's Libra to Aries and with the moon in Capricorn conjunct Pholus, there is this natural tension that's happening that's set up between Venus and Jupiter and widely with the sun. The sun's at 10 degrees, Venus is at 5 degrees, Mm. and Jupiter's over at 2 degrees of Aries. So Libra's... 10 degrees Libra is the sun, 5 degrees Libra is Venus. Libra opposing Aries. And then both of those signs are squaring Capricorn at 4 degrees. And Pholus is right there at 4 degrees. And Pholus is about kind of letting something out of the bag, kind of like uncorking something. Yep. It also can be kind of the consequences of something coming up that aren't supposed to be released. Okay. So when the moon moves through that section of that early Capricorn section, it's going to trigger the square. The moon itself will square Venus and Mm -hmm. Jupiter and then Pholus being right there. So there's this sense that it's a T-square is what it's called. and it's It's a right angle square where there's an opposition between Venus and Jupiter and then Pholus and the moon are at the pinnacle of those two planets opposing each other. So there's something that is released, let out, brought to a head, 
it's, I yeah. mean, it's hard to describe, but there's something that's kind of, the, the moon coming through there is going to trigger something that, of a release. Okay. So, you know, Libra, Venus and Libra, it's all, you know, so cuddly and cozy and warm over there. And <laughs> Jupiter, Jupiter and Aries, it's that we, me opposition. Yeah. So there's Pholus and Capricorn kind of popping something, you know, something, okay. some kind of feeling, sensation. The moon is also the public. It could be a, a mundane event. Mm. In Capricorn, something that may be uh, more structural, something that's more of an everyday life kind of thing okay. that influences both the personal and the collective. So the the personal being Jupiter and Aries, the more the collective or the we being, being Libra. It might also be something as the moon comes through and aspects a conjunction to Pholus, it might be something that is upsetting to mm. the sense of balance, to the sense of aesthetic or beauty or norm. There is this opposition right on the right at the top of the week. It's a okay. it can also be a confliction with a third party. So, you mm. know, Venus in Libra female, male, or, you know, opposing genders or, or binary, yeah. non-binary, it doesn't matter. But that kind of relationship, a personal, yeah. interpersonal relationship is now squared by a third person. Folus, oh, somebody let something out of the bag. Oh, got it. Yep. It's the first quarter moon as well. So the moon's in Capricorn squaring the sun in Libra. So again, we have this you know, the sun being personal, the moon being collective, the moon being feeling, the yeah. sun being ego. You know, there might be some bruising of an, of egos going on. So okay. that's, you know, Sunday the 2nd. It can be building on Saturday the 1st, and it yep. can also spill over into Monday the 3rd. Okay. But the moon moves on. Yes. The moon moves on. However, Pholus is at four degrees and will be squaring Venus at five degrees Libra, mm. and it will be continuing to square Jupiter. Okay. So the moon is the fastest moving body yep. in the in our zodiac. It kind of acts sometimes like a instigator. Yes. So as the moon moves over Pholus, that's why I'm saying that it activates this yes. square, this T-square. But the T-square is going to be holding. Okay. And Jupiter is going back and forth. He's retrograde now, but Venus is going to be moving on. Okay. There will be kind of this activation of this something coming up. Okay. It's possible that it will be more personal and affect one more on a more intimate level on October 2nd. Okay. As we move through the week, Wednesday, October 5th, the moon will square Uranus and Taurus and the moon will conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. Mm. So this is again, this kind of, you know, we've been talking Uranus and Taurus, Saturn and Aquarius yes. for a while now. Yes. Each of those planets are coming into very close square, mm. which has been, you know, in and out of phase over the last two years. Right. And it has to do with authority, mm -hmm. which is Saturn, and then sovereignty, which is Uranus. Yep. So my rules unto myself <laughs> and your rules apply to everybody. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it's this very big dynamic, authority versus sovereignty. Yeah. And the moon moving through, making a conjunction to Saturn is going to trigger that Square because the moon will square Uranus as well as conjunct Saturn. Right. So this has been a monthly right. cycle. But I always bring yep. it up because it is happening so regularly. And these big planets yep. have been holding this position for so long that it's kind of like, it's yep. almost like a background. It's almost like white yes. noise now. Yeah, like an underscore. It might surface for you if you have personal planets right. near 15 to 20 some odd degrees of Taurus or Aquarius because, you know, Saturn's hanging out in the middle of Aquarius at 18 degrees. Uranus is hanging out at 18 right. degrees Taurus. You know, it's right. really close. It's they're almost in the closest yeah. they're going to be. They're getting They're going to get a little closer, mm. but they're in the same degree. They're not at the same minute, but they're getting, they right. can be considered and exact, just about exact. So okay. that's going to be playing out on a, you know, on the big stage as well as on the personal smaller platform. And uh, okay, so just be on the lookout for that. You know, people might be pushing your buttons to to conform. <laughs> 
Right. Follow the yeah, rules. Yeah. There's a big, okay. you know, whatever that means and however it manifests. Right, right. But that's the potential. Okay. You can choose, though, you know, I mean, you can yes. kind of, you can choose. Venus is in Libra, so you can choose to kind of skirt around things. You can be very nice <laughs> about everything. Diplomatic. You don't yes. have to be a curmudgeon, but yep. just know that that's going on. Great. On Friday, October 7th, our direct Mercury is going to be repeating a trine yep. to Pluto, which happened last week. We talked about that. Mercury trine Pluto. So this is kind of hasn't gone away. I mean, yeah. Mercury backed up, trined Pluto last week, and now it's going forward and it's trining mm. Pluto again. So mm-hmm. whatever was discussed, whatever might have come up, last week, maybe in a very deep, you know, sensitive level that may not have been resolved will be up again to be discussed. That's that echo phase you were talking about at the beginning of the episode. Okay. So Mercury's trining Pluto. So this is another, another opportunity to get it right, to go deep. Okay. To really make your words count. Okay. So this is a, an opportunity for persuasion talk about kind of taboo subjects like sexuality or psychological yep. issues concerning trauma that might not okay. be like your run-of-the-mill cafeteria conversation with right. you sit down with at a random table. Right. But if you want to go deep with someone that you've had a conversation with before, you can get a little bit deeper at okay. this time because Mercury's going direct and it's making this trying to Pluto and it's it's easy. You know, it's a trine. Okay. It's a facility facilitated discussion. Yes. Yeah. So Mercury's in Virgo moving forward. So it could be about concerning habits or hygiene or, you know, your daily life. Virgo is very much connected to service and daily life. It's about pets and taking care of things. Yes. You know, that need to be taken care of out of duty. Yes. Virgo takes care of things out of a sense of duty, out of respect, out of what is propriety. Okay. So Virgo is very much invested in that. And nice. Mercury and Virgo will help you get to the kind of the bottom of, you know, mm. what your job is. Nice. And then going into Pluto, you know, trining Pluto, it will help you really discover the true meaning of the work that you're doing. That sounds awesome. So as we move into Saturday, the moon is in Aries. It Mm. conjuncts Jupiter. So again, it's uh, kind (laughs) of a a reverb back to the top of the week where the moon was in Capricorn making a square to Venus. Now it's in the alignment making a conjunction to Jupiter in Aries, making a opposition to Venus in Libra. As the moon continues on, it will refine that opposition. But there's a brief period of time here where you might revisit a conversation or okay. some awkwardness of, that <laughs> happened earlier in the week around, you know, we and me and okay. you <laughs> and them. <laughs> <laughs> With that T-square, right, that I talked yes, about that happened yes. on Sunday. The other thing that happens on Saturday, the 8th, is that Pluto goes direct at 26 degrees Capricorn. Oh, okay. Do we have a party? Because yes. now it's full steam ahead to March 23rd when Pluto steps over the line into Aquarius. Woohoo! About time. Yeah. So this is going to be a sprint, you know, yeah. Pluto moving direct. It won't go retrograde again until May of 2023. It will be in Aquarius. Okay. It will dip back into Capricorn, nice. but not for long. It's going to, you know, <sighs> only get to like 29, 28 degrees and then it will go forward again. But this is a real time to look at the past 14 years. I mean, basically, Pluto's been in Capricorn since 2008, so 13 wow. Some odd years, 13, 14 years. Look at how your life has been restructured. Mm, Look okay. at what area of your life has had the most turmoil. Yeah. And that's been Pluto's job is yeah. to move you along, to drop the dead weight, to leave the past behind. Yeah. So this move forward for Pluto will give you a sense of completion. Yeah. You're on the final stretch of this. Yeah. And by March of 2023, You'll be in new territory. So we have about six months here between September, October-ish to late March when there's going to be an, another equinox and yes. another new moon f- yes. two days after the equinox. So it's kind of like a setup like this last equinox, September 22nd. Yep. With the new moon right after it 
on September 25th, right? So you have this opportunity now to really shift your life, you okay. know, and leave the past behind. And we'll, we'll have some eclipses coming up. We'll talk about that. Yeah. You know, there's going to be a lot of that in these coming months. And if you haven't done that work yet, yep. and I, you know, a lot of people have, so I'm not, I'm no, not no. calling anybody out, <laughs> but there might be, you know, there might be big shifts for folks that yeah. haven't really moved to where they not so much moved in terms of physical move, right, but right. moved in terms of mental, emotional yeah. shift. Yes. It could be a physical move as well. But there are these major, you know, clearings. It's almost like the plow. When, yes. When a plow goes through a field, you know, it turns up what's underneath. Yeah. And that's what Pluto's job has been over the last 13, 14 years is to plow up what hasn't been working. Yeah. What has been stuck. Yes. This is kind of the last push, the last six months of this. Awesome. So I, this is a big deal. So yeah, yeah Pluto going direct at 26 degrees Capricorn. You Woo-hoo. might want to go. My dog is even. He's like, yeah, it's been a. <laughs> that's wow. that's how old he is. That's it. That's been his whole exactly. Oh my god, <laughs> his whole time. Yeah, Pluto and oh, Capricorn. Man. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> anyway, so. Yeah, so take a look at where 26 degrees Capricorn is in your chart, your natal chart, and see what house that's been influencing, nice. what house Pluto's been influencing. Okay. Excellent. Woo, what a way to start in October. Yes, I know. Did you get? Did you have a card? You did have a card. Well, the card that came out today that popped out of the deck is the Hierophant. It's number five in the tarot deck. Seems to relate to which path you're going to follow, maybe? There's the Hierophant, which could be related to the Saturn-Uranus square. Mm, yeah. You know? yep. So the Hierophant is like, you know, it's my job to tell you what to do. That's the yeah. Hierophant. And then there's two guys kind of kneeling at his feet. Yeah, yeah. You just see the backs yeah. of their robes. And there's two yeah. columns in the Hierophant. Yes. And this yep. implies that there's a choice. There's yes. two guys kneeling in front of the hierophant, in front, and then there's two columns behind him. He kind of guards yep. this kind of portal. Yes. You don't have to follow the hierophant. Well, the hierophant also, he this figure has two arms in the air. One's holding a kind of scepter. The other is sort of in a benediction. So it's almost like so what's being offered and which way do you want to go in terms of choice and what's being offered. But also this sense of Uranus Saturn. Who do you want to follow? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Jude. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. You're the best. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) I learn so much every week and it's been so helpful. Listeners, you can connect with us at ConnectedSisterStargazers.com via email. You can listen to our weekly call and astrology show at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, WMPG.org, from anywhere on the planet and out in space. Yes, you can call in from <laughs> anywhere in the world. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, we'll talk, I guess, more next week as we now get in deeper into this autumnal season and the month of October and the eclipse is coming up. All good work. Good work out there. You're doing great work. Yeah, thank you all for listening. All right, we'll see you next next week. All right. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to Sister Stargazers. Let us know what worked for you this week. Find us on Facebook and post a comment at Sister Stargazers.